Right. Uh, today we're going to cover this topic 13.1 to 13.3 in which uh, it will describe about the Newton's law of motion, equations of motion and equation of motion for a system of particles. So to the objective, student will be able to write the equation of motion for an accelerating body. And second, you will be able to draw the free body and kinem kinetic diagrams for an accelerating body. So before this, we just learned about how to draw the free body diagram in which it will consist of a body and the indication of force. But now we need to include another matter which is acceleration in a kinetic diagrams. Right, just keep this part. Right, this is one of the application. The motion of an object depends on the forces acting on it. So, for example, this one, a parachutist relies on the atmospheric drag resistance force generated by her parachute to limit her velocity. So, for example, this one, if you see, this is the parachute. And the parachute we create we, uh, a force that we say as drag force. So the drag force is responsible to generate uh, a rest another resistant force in which it will reduce the velocity. Why? Because knowing the drag force, we technically we can have a, some kind of importance during the landing. Okay, because it mentioned knowing the drag force, how can we determine the acceleration or velocity of the parachutist at any point in time? Uh, so we can estimate how much is the acceleration, acceleration and the velocity of the parachutist during the landing. Alright, another application, the baggage. Okay, in this figure, the baggage truck A tows cart B and cart C. If we know the, fri the frictional force developed at the, dri the driving wheels of the truck, could we determine the acceleration of the truck? But how? Can we also determine the horizontal force acting on the coupling between the truck and the cut B? Okay, this is needed when designing the coupling or understanding why it failed. Okay, another application, a frag elevator is lifted using a motor attached to a cable and pulley system as shown. So, in this case, I have a motor here and then there is some kind of connection between three type three pulleys with some kind of cable in order to lift this this load. Okay, how can we determine the tension force in the cable required to lift the elevator and load at a given acceleration? Okay, so means that we technically if we know how much is the motor operate and we can set how much the acceleration that we we want to use here we technically can design how much is the cable as long as we know how much is the tension force developed in the cable right this is needed to decide the size of the cable that should be be used the size here could be in terms of the diameter of the cable itself Right? Is the tension force in the cable greater than the weight of the elevator and its load? Here you need to understand the summation of force. If the force tension is greater than the weight, means that uh, the weight of the elevator and its load means that the force uh, the means that the cable might be able to, to break. Alright, Newton's law of motion. The motion of a particle is governed by Newton's three laws of motion. Okay, the first one, a particle, or we say the first law. A particle originally at rest or moving in a straight line at constant velocity. 
will remain in this state if the resultant force acting on the particle is zero. What do you understand with constant velocity? Constant velocity technically, if we derive that or we differentiate that with, res with respect to time, we'll get acceleration equal to zero. So summation of force equal to m a, which is a here is going to be zero, means that summation of force will be zero. So a particle is technically originally, originally at rest. This type of law you have covered here in statics. Okay, for second law, if the resultant force on the particle is not zero, means that there is some kind of a summation with a force that create a value. If the resultant force on the particle is not zero, the particle experiences an acceler acceleration in the same direction as the resultant force. So this acceleration has a magnitude proportional to the resultant force. Okay, another one, the last one is the third law motion of Newton laws. Mutual forces of action and reaction between two particles are equal, opposite and collinear. You might find this third law equation in some kind of mechanism of uh, shooting or in terms of collision. Okay, the first and third law were used in, de in developing the concepts of statics. Newton's second law forms the basic of the study of dynamics. Okay, mathematically, Newton's second law of motion can be written as F equal to MA. If you see here, F is, indicate, is indicated in red, with the same with A, means that this is in terms of vector. Where F is the resultant unbalanced force acting on the particle and A is the acceleration of the particle. The positive scalar M is the mass of the particle. So Newton's second law cannot be used when the particle speeds approach the speed of light or if the size of the particle S is extremely small which is approximately size of an atom. Right, this is say, Newton's second law, uh, Newton's law of gravitational attraction. Any two particles or bodies have a mutually attractive gravitational force acting between them. Newton postulated the law governing this gravitational force as F equal to G M1 times M2 divided by R square, where F is technically is the force of attraction between two bodies. G is the universal constant of gravitation. M1 and M2 is the mass of the body. And R is the distance between centers of the two bodies. When near, to, uh, when near the surface of the Earth, the only, the only gravitational force having any sizable magnitude is that between the earth of the body so we say or we call this force as a wake of the body so mass and wake what is the difference between mass and wake it is important to understand the difference between the mass and wake of a body so mass mass is an absolute property of a body it is in the independent of the gravitational field in which it is measured the mass provides a measure of the resistance of a body to change in velocity as defined by Newton's second law of motion. If we take the same F equal the same equation, F equal to MA, so we technically we can rearrange back M equal to F divided by A. So M here, the weight of the body is not absolute since it depends on the gravitational field in which it is measured. Weight is defined as W equal to mg. The mass that we obtain from the second Newton law here need to be uh, multiplied with g. g here is the acceleration due to gravity. For example, Earth, we have uh, g equal to 9.81 meter per second square. All right.
Right, SI system. SI system versus FPS system. SI system here in the SI system of units, mass is a base unit and weight is the is a derived unit. Typically mass is specified in kilograms. Uh, in short form we put SKG and weight is calculated from W equal to M multiplied with G. So if the gravitational acceleration G is specified in unit of meter per second squares then the weight is expressed in newtons n so on the earth's surface g can be taken as g equal to 9.81 meter per second square so we can put here w here means weight and the unit of weight is n newton equal to m which is kg times g in term of meter per second square so technically we can say newton is actually equal to kg times meter per second square okay equation of motion uh, this is section 13.2 the motion of a particle is governed by newton's second law relating the unbalanced forces on a particle to its acceleration if more than one force acts on the particle the equation of motion can be written as summation of force. So summation of force here is actually resultant force. And we say this as Fr equal to M mass times with A. A is the acceleration. Okay. So here we know that Fr is the resultant force which is a vector summation of all forces. So to illustrate this uh, this equation, uh, consider a particle act a particle acted on by two forces. If we take this blue dot here as a particle, for example, I have two force F one in this direction, and it is shorter shorter than F two here. So the shorter direction of f1 means that the magnitude is less than f2 but it will be in term of this direction if we put this in term of x y and uh, x y coordinates we would say f1 will be negative x and negative y while f2 will be negative x in this direction and positive y but we need to know what in which direction the particles going to move for example if we know the direction of the particle in this direction so i will say that a here is the direction of the acceleration in this direction so first draw you need to draw the particles free body diagram okay this one will indicate you as a free body diagram because it is just a summation of force showing all of forces acting on the particles then next draw the kinetic diagrams what is kinetic diagram kinetic diagram it's actually you need to refer back to this denotion m cross a in which showing the initial force m a acting on the same direction as the resultant force fr so here this is our free body diagram of this particle in which we need to denote or we need to draw the particle and we need to show where is the direction of the force so technically you are just drawing this this part summation of force and then what is the kinetic diagram kinetic diagram you are showing the particle and its direction of acceleration here ma so you are technically referring to this part ma okay initial frame of reference this equation of motion is valid if the acceleration is measured in a newtonian newtonian or initial frame of reference but what does it this means for problems concerned with motion or uh, sorry for problems concerned with motions at or near the earth's surface 
we typically assume our initial frame to be fixed to the earth so we neglect actually we neglect any acceleration effects from the earth rotation so we just actually we we just assume that the earth is actually fixed uh, for problems involving satellites or rockets the initial frame of reference is often fixed to the star okay equation of motion for a system of particles section, this is section 13.3 the equation of motion can be extended to include systems of particles so but uh, this includes the motion of solids liquids or gas system so i have a initial initial frame x y and z so this is my particle okay as in statics there are in internal forces and external forces acting on the system but what is the difference between them so using the definition of m equal to m summation m i as the total mass of all particles and ag as the acceleration of the center of mass g of the particles then you it might goes to m a g which is equal to summation of m i times a i okay what is i here i means that if i have one two or three or more than that particle i will say that summation of m i a i is actually m1 times a1 plus m2 times a2 plus m3 times a3 and then it's continuous as long as you know how much is the uh, the particles so the summation of each uh, particle is actually m times ag m here is the total mass uh, it's mentioned here m here as the total mass of all particles means that you need to you have considered all the particles and ag is the acceleration of the center of mass means that you have combined all the particles as one body and you need to determine where is the center of gravity so that's the location of ag okay the text shows the detail but for a system of particles summation of force equal to mag where summation of force is the sum of the external forces acting on the entire system right i would take example of this body for example if this is i so i have more than one particle i uh, this is one two three four five six and so on but as long as it is consists in one system I need to determine where is the gravita gravitational center or cent we all, all, always mention that as center of mass so for example this one so I will say that this is my G this is my gravity so means that AG will be location, uh, located here So the key point of uh, to solve this question uh, to solve this this problem here in this topic Newton's second law is the law of nature in which it is experimentally proven not in the result of an analytical proof second mass a property of an object is a measure of the resistance to a change in velocity of the object okay third the way in which we denote that as a force depends on the local gravitational field means that if the mass is measured in earth it will be different if we measure the mass uh, the weight in another planet for example mars neptune Plut uh, pluto is not considered as a planet anymore or any other any other planets so here the one that going to change is g so you need to uh, calculating the weight of an object is the application of f summation f equal to ma in which w equal to mg okay 
for the for, uh, points unbalance forces cause the acceleration of objects so this condition is fundamental to all dynamics problem okay this is the procedure for the application of the equation of motion first you need to select a convenient initial coordinate system either it is a rectangular normal or tangential or cylindrical coordinates may be used okay second you need to draw okay this is the point that students always miss you need to draw a free body diagram showing all external forces applied to the particles like we said just now summation of f so you need to identify all the force that acting on the body so you need to resolve forces into their appropriate components for example if i have a vector i need to resolve that uh, uh, the force vector force and i need to resolve that in terms of fx and fy okay this one if you know in dynamic summation of force based on the newton second law summation of force equal to ma so the force summation of force we have denoted here in the point three point two draw the free body diagram but the third one is kinetic diagram showing the particles initial force ma so you need to resolve this vector into its appropriate components as well okay for apply apply the equation of motion in the scalar components form and solve this equation for the unknowns what means by in their scalar component form okay for example if i have summation of force the summation of force will be uh, can be referred to f x plus f y plus f z and so on which is also equal to m a x plus m a y plus m a z so you once you identify where is the component of f x and a y you put that you separate that into its own component so we say that as a scalar components so you solve for x component you solve for y component and then z component uh, that's one of the example but it might be different if you use another initial coordinate system like normal tangential or cylindrical coordinates okay it may be necessary to apply the proper kinematic relations to generate additional equations so it's not only restricted to summation of fy equal to ma but you might need to apply another components like uh, whatever we learn in project motion whatever we learn in another theory of physics so everything might be concerned if you want to solve the problem here okay right let's take a look an example of uh, this given in this given slide okay uh, given a 25 kilogram block is subjected to the force f equal to 100 newtons okay, the spring has a stiffness of k k here is the stiffness of the spring equal to 200 newton per meter and it's in and is unstretched when the block is at a okay the context surface is smooth if you see here i have only one block in which uh, in the first place it is in a position here and it is kind of attached to a spring to this point so the length of the spring is actually 0 0.3 meter towards the, the center and it is been uh, subjected to a force of 100 newton after several distance s here the block is now uh, being located here so now if you see the block is at a new position while the spring is some kind of stretch from this posi uh, from this length to this length while you know that 
the spring is actually equal uh, the spring has a stiffness equal to 200 newton per second uh, 200 newton per meter okay okay so what do you need to do okay get the information here they give the contact surface is smooth what means by smooth here is the surface between the block and this uh, this ground is smooth so means there is no friction it is frictionless so means that fs we always uh, put that uh, friction force as fs is actually zero so for, uh, you need to find draw the free body and kinetic diagrams of the blocks when s equal to 0 0.4 meter so here for example if we put s here equal to 0 0.4 so you need to draw the free body diagram and the kinetic diagrams of this block at that position how to do that first you need to define an initial coordinate system either it is x y z or uh, nt for example so you need to define by yourself you need to decide which type of plane or initial coordinate system that you want to use Okay, second, draw the block free body diagram showing all external forces. Remember that free body diagram just now is, is summation of force. Okay, third, draw the block's kinetic diagram in which kinetic diagram will be uh, make the measurement of MA showing all the initial force vector in the proper direction. Okay, an initial SY frame can be defined as fixed to the ground. Okay, this is the solution. Uh, second, draw the free body diagram of the blocks. How to do that? Okay, you need to consider once the block has moved 0 0.4 meter because they mentioned here 0 0.4 meter S. So what's going to happen there? Okay, I have a block and I also have, this is my block. This is the wake acting on the body which is w equal to mg m here is 25 kilogram so means that 25 times g and it is always pointing downwards because it is concerned with the gravitational force okay it's mentioned it is subjected to f equal to 100 newton okay once we have uh, the, the the block is actually lay, uh, laying on the ground so we actually we have another force we say, say this one as neutral force normal force sorry so this is normal force why normal because normal always pointed 90 degree from the ground if you see here the ground is actually perpendicular in this direction and this is 90 degree so it's always pointing opposite to the uh, to the wake or ground all right so where's the spring okay the spring is here if you see it is mentioned that f uh, the k here is actually 200 newton per meter so the formula of solving for spring is F S equal to K times with S. So is is actually F equal to K S. But what is S here? Okay, S here is uh, dimension that S in term of delta because there is some kind of changes changes in term of displacement. So delta here is actually changes of displacement or we say in this case is spring deformation. So when S equal to 0 0.4, this displace, uh, the changes in terms of the spring is actually 0 0.5 minus 0 0.3 which is equal to 0 0.2. Where do you get 0 0.5 here? Okay, 0 0.5 is actually when we refer back to this diagram this is 0 0.3 while this is 
0 0.4 because they mentioned here 0 0.4 so if we uh, calculate by using the theorem Pythagoras 0 0.4 we have 4 3 why this one will be 5 so this is going to be 0 0.5 so you need so the five initial uh, springs uh, length is actually 0 0.3 while the final one is 0 0.5 so we know that the deformation of the spring will be 0 0.5 minus 0 0.3 which is equal to 0 0.2. So once you know the 0 0.2, so technically we know Fs in which Fs equal to 200 which is this is K, the spring's constant. Uh, spring's constant is the st spring stiffness constant times with the deformation of the spring. So 200 times 0 0.2 in which it will give you 40. Okay, 40 Newton. Alright, so you know you have solved the free body diagram. So this is also mentioned there is no friction force. Why? Because the contact surface is smooth. Right, so now you need to draw the kinetic diagram of the blocks. Okay, you know that uh, when the force is acting on this body towards this direction, where is the direction of the motion? It technically will be in this direction. So you know that the acceleration will be point, pointed towards this direction. So it will be easy for you to determine the direction of the kinetic diagram. So you just put here as uh, this is considered as G or this is center of mass. So time, it means that 25 times A. So the block will be moved to the right. The acceleration can be directed to the right if the block is speeding up or to the left if it is slowing down. Okay, finish that part. Alright, uh, this is one of the example of our group problem solving. Uh, given a 10 kilogram block is subjected to a force of F equal to 500 Newton. So this is also concerned with spring, a spring of stiffness K equal to 500 Newton per meter is mounted uh, against the block. Okay, I have this. This is the block and this is this, the spring. While this is by external force, it is not uh, in one direction as a spring, but I have some kind of inclination here. So when S equal to zero, S uh, equal to uh, zero means that the block is at rest, it doesn't move anywhere, and the spring is uncompressed, means this is a, in the neutral form. So the contact surface is smooth. The same when I say contact surface is smooth means that I don't have any friction force. So the same, you need to draw the free body and kinetic diagrams of the block. Okay, first define an initial coordinate system in which I believe that this is also X and Y uh, components exist. And then uh, draw the block's free body diagram showing all external forces applied to the block in the proper direction. Okay, this is free body diagram concerned with the force. While the third one is draw the block's kinetic diagram showing the initial force vector MA in the proper direction. So if based on my based on my uh, understanding, if I have a force here, the block's going to move in this direction. So how to solve this? First, you need to uh, identify the initial SY frame. And then just draw the free body diagram based on the Newton's second law summation of force, summation of F. And then the last, uh, okay, this one, for example, this one. So you need to imagine that we have pull, uh, we have applied the force here. So what, whatever happened here, you need to imagine that, that in your mind. For example, if I apply the force here, 
of course the spring will compress so what is the direction of the compression towards the blocks so you need to to be able to define that okay i have a force of 500 newton in this direction so if i consider the spring itself it will have a reaction force here so it will point the force of due to the spring will pointed towards the the box of the block and the same i'm going to have weight of the mass 10 times g and also new uh, normal force here so uh, i will consider that i have finished identify all the forces and i can draw my free body diagram okay now draw the kinetic diagram of the blocks this is very easy because you know once you apply the force here uh, the, the box will move towards this direction so just put that as 10a so it means that the block the block will move to the right the acceleration can be directed to the right if the block is speeding up or to the left if it is slowing down so this uh, you might okay this is uh, the end of this lecture whatever it is uh, just go through back this lecture and if you have any question let's uh, discuss later thank you very much